everybody, it's Ken Knuckles with the Lion's Teeth blog, and this is stoppage time for July 19th, 2016. There's big news out of the Orlando City Club today, and that is that OCSC has hired Jason Kreiss as its second head coach in club history. A um, little bit of a background on Jason Kreiss. He played 11 seasons in MLS. He started off with Dallas and then he moved over to RSL. Uh, he scored 100 goals and he was named to five MLS All-Star teams as a player. Um, then he moved into the coaching side and he coached RSL from 2007 to 2013. Uh, he made it to the playoffs as a coach every year from 2008 to 2013. He won an MLS Cup with RSL in 2009, and he went to a second MLS title game as a coach. So he knows how to get, he knows how to build a team, and he knows how to get it to the playoffs. Um, if he has the time, and if he has the ability to uh, influence who the club brings in as players, I am sure that we are going to see uh, a lot of success with Jason Kreis here. Uh, the only problem that I see is a mirror of maybe what happened to him in uh, NYCFC. It's clear that with an ownership group tied to Manchester City, NYCFC wanted to bring in splashy big names to the Big Apple uh, to fill the big and historic Yankee Stadium. And um, because they, they think that uh, international tourists will want to go and see uh, players whose names they know uh, when they come and uh, visit the city and uh, go to a soccer match. Now, Orlando City uh, looks like maybe they tried to do a little bit of that last year. Um, clearly, they got a sense with uh, the whole mess that happened between Paul McDonough and uh, the other fellow that they brought in from Portugal that only lasted like three weeks uh, as the GM. Um, they, you know, they found out that that just doesn't work uh, in terms of MLS. So hopefully they have learned their lesson and hopefully they will listen to the coach and let him tell them what kinds of skills he needs, what type of player he needs, with the temperament, those types of things. Um, time will tell, but I'm pretty optimistic about the uh, about this pick if um, the coach is allowed to coach and the ownership learns that their job is just to listen to the coach and the GM and do what they're told and not try to get in the business of picking the players for the coach for the GM. Uh, this weekend coming up, there's going to be a doubleheader. Both Orlando City and the Pride are on the road on Saturday. You'll see complete match previews in the blog. And finally, I want to close out with a Twitter question. We do have a Twitter question this week. Uh, at Galabond tweeted to the hashtag STQ, What's up with the hats, man? Well, uh, thanks for watching. And the answer is that just like you need a different kit for each team, you need a different hat for each team. Uh, all I'm going to say is that I've been wearing the purple top hat for every uh, Orlando City match this season. And you know what? They have not lost at home. So there's something to it. Uh, now, if I can just figure out how to get the top hat to influence through the TV when they're playing on the road, we'll be fine. Um, but... Uh, they are not losing at home, so it's doing its job at the matches. Uh, the purple fedora, we got to work on that a little bit. That's for the pride matches. It started off strong, but it's kind of wilted a little bit in the summer. And, um, you know, as you've seen, um, the ladies have not, uh, have not gotten every point recently uh, from the home matches. So... Hopefully they can turn that around. Hopefully the hat can uh, uh, make a comeback and do what it's supposed to do in the second half of the season and help the gals out uh, to take all the points on offer when they are playing at home and when they're playing on the road for that matter because um, I have to wear the hat while I'm watching the matches too. All right. Uh, take care, everyone. Hope you have a great week. 
Um, hope to see you out at a watch party this weekend uh, for either the Pride or Orlando City. And we will see you on the pitch. Bye-bye.